Hello YouTube, D-Deckin here, and with Halloween being over a fortnight away, you generally start to see more and more places have a bit more fun with the holiday season. Whether that's video games offering new uh, sprites or character avatars, grocery stores selling oversized pumpkins, or hey, even people's front lawn. Nothing can go wrong with people's front lawn, right? However, we have instead a pick a gift campaign. <laughs> now for those who don't know how this works, every day when you log in, you get to choose between one of three items. You pick one to keep, and the other two are discarded. You don't get them. The idea behind this event is for you to weigh your options and pick the items you think are best for you. Some are better than others, and some aren't worth it. However, that is for you to decide. That is, of course, the Pick a Gift campaign. <laughs> now, it's been a while since I posted anything, mostly because I upload videos for the fun of it. But I always like to talk about this event, so I shall. Now, the first thing to note is sort of a lack of title. Now, not all Pick a Gift campaigns have had a title, and some have been a bit silly. Some have been like the seasonal celebration or one year anniversary. But this one does not have one. And personally, I wouldn't mind if it was like Halloween themed or even was uh, celebrating Halloween or whatever, but the event ends on October 28th, not October 31st. <laughs> so this isn't technically a Halloween event, so I can't call it that. I guess mid-October Pick a Gift? <laughs> I don't know. But hey, free stuff is free stuff and for a 10-day glorified survey. <laughs> that said, let's I just want to start talking about this event. Now, the first thing to note are days 1, 3, and 5, which are gem days. Now, on gem days, you get gems. Simple as that. Now, you of course could get other things, such as day 1 giving you uh, 20,000 gold or 2,000 gate keys, establishing a ratio of 1 to 400 gem to gold, which I don't mind. I, I personally like that better than the 1 to 100 gem to gold that they used to be that they used to run for this event. Now, granted that of course means we have to get less gems now, but again, I like the ratio because I do not value gold that much. Gold is only really used in the card trader shop. And even then, if you don't go there every single day, you stockpile so easily of it. So it's easy to stockpile. Like I have 9 million right now that I'm just not using. Whereas with Gate keys. Gate keys, you can turn those into color gate keys, so I don't mind that as much. Not to mention you can get, you basically can get gold from duels against other characters at the gate, so it's, I wish they'd do something else with gold. As for days three and five, <laughs> day and three and five also all for gold. But the thing is, ever since they changed this new format, they have not yet changed the gem to gold ratio for these days. Like, again, day one, it all, it show, stats, sets it up as 1 to 400, but days 3 and 5 kind of ignore that. Like, I, I get what they're going with. Like, they don't they don't want to have just, like, 25-25 for these two days. They make it more fun and exciting to have to get 50 days over two days by making it 20 and 30. However, the goal does not reflect that. <laughs> like, I just wish the gold was, like, 8,000 the one day and the 12,000 the other day, just to make things consistent, because it's just not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as for the other th items, uh, super rare jewels and the dual orbs, super rare jewels are not as valuable as people give them credit for. Like, yes, you can get super rare cards from the shop, but gems are more, much more important. Like, super rare jewels just are, are drops in character duel, against character-based duels, so it, they're not as, again, they're not as valuable. And for dual orbs, dual orbs are very much similar to gate keys and gold. If you don't have them, if you don't use them, they stockpile. Like, I currently am sitting on, like, two, like, 220 dual orbs from the duelathon. It's still in my inbox because I don't, like, constantly refresh the page. I just duel casually. So, I'm not a big, personally big fan of them. There are some people who are. But with those out of the way, let's actually talk about the main, the main, uh, the main draw for this event. And that is the card days. Days two and four are recycled card days, which, by the way, card days are days where you get cards, just like how gem days are days where you get gems. <laughs> Simple as that. Now, days two and four, however, are recycled card days, which these cards come from the previous Pick a Gift campaign, which I believe was came out on September 12th. Those cards are, of course, Anti-Fusion anti -fusion Device and the Monarch Awakens. Anti-Fusion Device, as I mentioned in a previous video, is really good against cards like Massacre Inky because it does not target. It just pops a fusion monster straight up on the field. Now, granted, if you had a fusion monster and your opponent had a fusion monster, you activate it and your opponent gets rid of their fusion monster, technically you'd have to get rid of your own fusion monster, but it's still a good card because 
the big thing with uh, this Masquerade Inky is, like, whenever they make Masquerade Inky, for whatever reason, they always have two mask change. Mask, mask, yeah, mask change. So even if you try to do something to that first Inky, like a Floodgate, they're just going to change into a second Inky. Just... And as for the Monarch Awakens, I still personally like it because as we're moving into the new Synchro era, the Monarch Awaken is a support card for cards that don't rely on the extra deck. And with every deck being able to essentially play Synchro now, it's good counter-programming for people who don't want to conform to Synchro era. And I like that. Whether I think the card will do anything, I don't know. It could also hint at some, uh, some more future Monarch support or even some Tribute Summon support. I'm not quite sure. But again, it's still an option available, which again, I don't mind. That said, let's move on to the actual main source, which is days 6 and 8, which are the event card days. Now, event card days are essentially, are usually new cards offered for the event to, you know, entice people into the event. Last time, the new cards were, anti were once again, days Anti-Fusion Device and the Monarch Awakens, and this time, well, this time the cards aren't exactly new. They're actually cards, the uh, card drops, level up rewards for for Joey Wheeler and Yukimoto. Those cards being Rocket Warrior, being Rocket Warrior and Relink Karibo. Now Rocket Warrior already comes. You already can get two Rocket Warriors from just leveling Joey up to level 33, but you can only get one Relink Karibo when you level Yukimoto to level 40. That said, why exactly these two cards? Now first off, I should probably mention that. That pick a gift campaigns have in the past done level reward cards, and sometimes these level rewards, these ugh, these additional chances to get these cards are usually teases for future events. For example, we've got it took uh, two waves two of cards from the sky, a support card that lets you banish a fairy monster from your hand to draw two cards, until we got counter fairies, and then there was a uh, guardian of Filgran, and then right after that we got red eye slash dragon, which the card's pretty good with. So there is usually some merit to why they put these cards here. Sometimes it's just to get good cards to get good cards. Other times it's usually teases. Now, if we ignore the tease, however, and just look at the cards themselves, out of the two, Reeling Karibo is kind of the better one to kind of get. And the reason for that is, of course, it's a draw card and it's a protection card. When it's tributed, you draw a card, and if a monster would be destroyed in battle, you can just ban it from your graveyard instead. Now, of course, that does nothing against Amazon. Amazon will just banish your monster. But for, like, again, tribute decks with, let's say, the Monarch Awakens, you draw more, you get more advantage and you draw more cards with it. And, of course, when it says tributed, that doesn't actually mean tribute summon. That means tribute in general. Tribute summon is usually the main method of tributing, but there are cards like Econ, which you can tribute your monster and take a bonus monster, which do tribute cards. So there will probably be some people who will try to make some sort of a turbo decks when this card becomes, a, if they decide to bring this back for the next big gift campaign, you can try to get three copies of. As for Rocket Warrior, Rocket Warrior, well, I have a theory. <laughs> now, talking about it by itself, Rocket Warrior, Rocket Warrior has no name support. And by that, I mean, usually there are cards that say, here's Gear Freed the Iron Knight, and here's a card that if you use it on Gear Freed, it does this. Rocket Warrior doesn't have that. Rocket Warrior by itself is a somewhat okay card, and there's already two copies available when you level up Joey. So the question now is why to get three? Well, as I mentioned, sometimes the Pick a Gift likes to tease future cards and events. And, well, any fan of the anime might know of a certain card related to Rocket Warrior. It is It doesn't directly support Rocket Warrior, but Rocket Warrior in the anime has a close connection. And that close connection is to the Cloth Hemos. Yes, I believe in an upcoming event, we're going to be having something for the Cloth Hemos. Now, first off, let me say that this is just a theory. I have no facts. I don't look at data mining. I'm just speculating at this point that this could totally be a card that could be coming into the game. Not to mention, I'm just referring to this card. And by that, I mean there are three legendary knight cards. The Cloth Hemos, the Fang of Critias, the Eye of Tamias. I'm not saying all three of those cards are coming up in an event. I'm just speculating the Cloth Hemos itself. This is something similar to the Egyptian God cards. And with the Egyptian God cards, first we got Ra, then we got Slifer, and we still haven't got Obelisk. <laughs> it's been teased, but we haven't got Obelisk. So... 
I think we might have an event coming up to get the Claw of Hamos. And why exactly the Claw of Hamos? Well, in the anime, the Claw of Hamos was used to use a Rocket Warrior to turn it into Rocket Hermos Cannon. And whether or not we'll get this card as well, <laughs> that is, of course, a big speculation. It should be also be noted that Rocket Hermos Cannon is used with any Warrior-type monsters, not Rocket Warrior itself. So whether or not you want that third copy of Rocket Warrior or is up to you. And that's kind of why this Pick a Gift campaign exists. It lets you choose your options and decide for yourself, of course. That said, on these days, there are, and if you don't want the cards on these days, there are other options. For the rare, for the rare cards such as Rocket Warrior and Anti-Fusion Device, you can also get 200 rare jewels and a rare ticket. Now, the 200 rare jewels are not actually that bad. It's actually pretty decent, because they're used to get glossy cards. As for the rare ticket, personally, I would want this to be a glossy rare ticket. I still want this to be a glossy rare ticket. And the reason I say that is because ever since they updated the new, uh, login rewards every single day, they already give you rare tickets every single day, every uh, every couple days. So there isn't really a point for a regular rare ticket in this event. That's, like, it does nothing, essentially. The rare ticket for this event gives you either the casual pool or it gives you cards from the card shop, which is nice, but if you were to get, like, glossy cards from the card shop instead of having to upgrade it, that'd be a nice trade-off on the 200 rare jewels that you could get. That's my personal opinion, and... That is a, a debatable question I would like anyone in the comments to talk about. Like, would you want this to be a glossy rare ticket? I still want it to be. But that said, then there's the super rare cards. Instead of the super rare cards, Relink, Karibo, or, or, or the Monarch Awakens, you can get 50 gems, which is a great alternative, let me just say that, because any time to get gems is a great time. And once again, two super rare jewels, which, <laughs> once again, are not as good. <laughs> but that is, of course, debatable. Uh, trying to wrap this up really quickly, because I don't want to take too long. Day 7 is a is great for 500 rare jewels, but the ratio there is still terrible. Day 7 has been the same for a very long time, and I really wish they would, like, increase the super rare jewels and ultra rare jewels by a lot. Because even though I say super rare jewels are not as worth it, ultra rare jewels do have some value. Like, I would make an argument for two ultra rare jewels versus 500 rare jewels. That is a solid argument. I can't say one ultra rare jewel though. As for super rare jewels, eh, maybe five. I don't. Maybe five, maybe six. I don't have an actual like figure for ult super rare jewels. I just don't value them as much because they're easy. They are easy enough to drop when you're dueling against character duels a lot. That said, day nine. Uh, day nine, I have mixed feelings on. Like the day nine is basically for attribute is for attribute jewels, which has been like fire, water, earth, dark wind. Dark wind, dark wind, light, etc. So for this, they went spell trap and a third option. And for that third option, they went gold. And once again, I already set my feeling on gold. But at the exact same time, they're also comparing like 300 spell and trap jewels to 25 gold, 25 uh, gems. I'm not sure how I feel on that. But at the same time, if they were to give me options to sell uh, like ten, like 10,000 gold for some super rare jewels for like 300 spell, spell jewels and 300 trap jewels, I'd be totally okay with that. Konami, if you're listening, please put that in the game. But, <laughs> I don't, or whoever runs this game, just put that in the game. That'd be awesome. As for day 10, day 10 is the toughest day and the hardest decision you'll probably ever make. I'm not even sure which one I will pick. <laughs> but that said, uh, I didn't think too highly of this Pick a Gift campaign when I first saw it, but it grew on me as I started thinking over some things. Personally, like I said, I want some more. I wish there would have been a little bit more uh, Halloween themed, but I guess you can only go so far with uh, certain Halloween based cards that are already in the game, like with Ghost Tricks. So I guess there's only so much you could do, but what do you think? Do you like this event or nay or yay? <laughs> Let me know in the comments and have a good day.